In pursuance of the power conferred by Articles 245 and 246, read with entry 5 of the concurrent list, Parliament has enacted laws creating and regulating social legal institution of marriage. The state legislatures have made amendments to such laws with the assent of the president, since the subject of marriage is in the concurrent list. The petitioners seek that the court recognize the right to marry as a fundamental right. As explained above, this would mean that even if parliament and the state legislatures have not created an institution of marriage and exercise of their powers in our entry 5 of the concurrent list, they would be obligated to create an institution because of the positive postulate encompassed in the right to marry. This argument cannot be accepted. As explained in the previous section, the state through the instrument of law characterizes marriage with two constituent elements, the expressive component and the material component. Marriage may not have attained the social and legal significance it currently has if the state had not regulated through law. Thus, while marriage is not fundamental in itself, it may have attained significance because of the benefits which are realized through, reg through regulation. If the court finds that a provision is contrary to part three of the constitution, it shall declare that it is void or read it down by deleting phrases or read words in by adding or substituting phrases to save it from being declared void. If in the present batch of petitions, this court holds that section four of the Special Marriage Act is unconstitutional because it is under inclusive to the extent that it excludes by implication marriage between same sex couples, the court would either strike down section four of the SMA or follow the workability model submitted by the petitioners. If the court follows the first approach, the purpose of a progressive legislation such as the SMA would be lost. The SMA was enacted to enable persons of different religions and castes to marry. If the SMA is held void for excluding same-sex couples, it would take India back to the pre-independence era, where two persons of different religions and castes were unable to celebrate love in the form of marriage. Such a judicial verdict would not only have the effect of taking the nation back to the era when it was closed in social inequality and religious intolerance, would also push the courts to choose between eradicating one form of discrimination and prejudice at the cost of permitting another. If this court takes the second approach and reads words into the provisions of the SMA and provisions of other allied laws such as the Indian Succession Act and Hindu Succession Act, it would in effect be entering into the realm of the legislature. The submissions of the petitioners indicate that this court would be required to extensively read words into numerous provisions of the Special Marriage Act and other allied laws. The court is not equipped to undertake an exercise of such wide amplitude because of its institutional limitations. This court would in effect be redrafting the laws in the garb of reading words into the provisions. It is strike law that judicial legislation is impermissible. We are conscious that the courts usually first determine whether if the law is unconstitutional and then proceed to decide on the relief. However, in this case, an exercise to determine whether the SMA is unconstitutional because of under-inclusiveness would be futile because of the limitations of this court's power to grant a remedy. Whether a change should be brought into the legislative regime of the SMA is for Parliament to determine Parliament has access to varied sources of information and represents in itself a diversity of viewpoints in the polity. The court in the exercise of the power of judicial review must be careful not to tread into the legislative domain. It is clarified that this court has not adjudicated upon the validity of any laws other than the SMA, the FMA, the adoption regulations and the CARA circular. Page 153 by correction time. The understanding of the Constitution, then I said the goal of self-development and what it means to be human. Uh, this understanding of the Constitution is substantiated on the reading of part four of the Constitution. To illustrate article 38 states that the state shall strive to promote the welfare of people, then I refer to article 42 and article 47. The Constitution, through both positive and negative postulations, inter alia capacitates citizens in their quest to develop themselves. 
Such capacity building enables them to achieve their full potential in both the private and the public space and to be happy. The Indian constitution, unlike say the South African constitution, does not expressly provide that the constitution seeks to improve the quality of life and free the potential of each person. However, such an understanding can be gleaned from the provisions of part three and part four. Thus, one of the purposes of the rights framework is to enable the citizenry to attain the goal of self-development. Humans are unique in many respects. We live in complex societies, are able to think, communicate, imagine, strategize, and to do more. However, that which sets us apart from other species does not by itself make us human. These qualities are necessary elements of our humanity, but taken alone, they paint an incomplete picture. In addition to these qualities, our ability to feel love and affection for one another makes us human. We may not be unique in our ability to feel the emotion of love, but it is certainly a fundamental feature of our humanity. We have an innate need to see and to be seen, to have our identity, emotions, and needs fully acknowledged, recognized, and accepted. The ability to feel emotions such as grief, happiness, anger, and affection, and the need to share them with others makes us who we are. As human beings, we seek companionship, and most of us value abiding relationships with other human beings in different forms and capacities. These relationships may take many forms, the natal family, cousins and relatives, friends, romantic partnerships, mentors or students. Of these, the natal family as well as the family created with one's life partner form the fundamental groups of society. The need and ability to be a part of a family forms a core component of our humanity. These relationships which nourish the emotional and spiritual aspects of our humanity are important in and of themselves. Further, they are as important to self-development as the intellectual and eventually financial nourishment we receive through education. Self-development cannot be measured solely in terms of educational qualifications and financial capabilities. Such a description is to forget what makes us human. It is insufficient if persons have the ability and freedom to form relationships unregulated by the state. For the full enjoyment of such relationships, it is necessary that the state accord recognition to such relationships. Thus, the right to enter into a union includes the right to associate with a partner of one's choice, according recognition to the association, and ensuring that there is no denial of access to basic goods or services, which is crucial to achieve the goal of self-development. On the other hand, the state could directly inf indirectly infringe upon the freedom when it does not create sufficient space to exercise that freedom. A formal associational status or recognition of the association is necessary for the free and unrestricted exercise of the freedom to form intimate associations. Needless to say, there may be reasonable restrictions on this right. However, other than legally valid and binding restrictions, the right to intimate associations must be unrestricted. The state, by not endorsing a form of relationship, encourages certain preferences over others. In a previous segment of this judgment, we have discussed the tangible and intangible benefits of recognizing relationships in the form of marriage. While the tangible benefits of marriage are traceable to the content 